many of you have heard of Shipstead? Well, a lot, okay. But uh, you probably didn't hear about Shipstead before we became a client. <laughs> um, so, Abnexus is almost 10 years old, I've just heard. Shipstead is 178 years old. <laughs> Um, so it started as a printing company uh, and then kept on reinventing itself, getting into, there we go. So the yellow is uh, all the countries where we're doing business at the moment. Um, so it was a printing company. We started reinventing ourselves, going into digital media, then classified sites, um, and then even what we call growth sites like price comparison and things like that. So today... Uh, we've got three main branches. We have all of the newspapers in Norway and uh, Sweden, and there's many of them. And then we have classified marketplaces like Le Bon Quoi in France, uh, which um, is actually the third biggest website in France after Google and Facebook. And uh, they have about 25 million unique visitors per month. Shipstead as a whole has more than 200 million unique visitors per month. Um, so not far to go to be about the size of the United States. Um, so, but you might not have heard of Shipstead, but you might have heard of some of the brands within Shipstead. So if you're from Sweden, you'll know Blockit. If you're from Italy, you'll know Subito. If you're from Austria, you would have heard of Spock. Spock is actually now in the UK as well. Um, but Two years ago, two and a half years ago, when I joined, Shipstead was pretty much lots of small companies under the umbrella of Shipstead. We didn't have one big technology stack, and we didn't have one technology organization. Today, all of product and technology is in one organization. And about a year and a half ago, we decided, well, what are we going to build? Um, and we realized, well, it's going to take us years if we want to build our own ad server or ad exchange. So that's when we partnered up with AppNexus. And uh, we've had a relationship since then, <laughs> for a year and a half. And uh, what we decided was our real strength is our data. Uh, we're collecting a lot of data on our users. Uh, we know what they're like, what they like to buy, what they like to sell, what they like to read in the newspaper. Um, and that's our real strength. So. What we decided was we're going to partner with AppNexus and we're going to start building products on top of the AppNexus stack. We've built many products on top of the stack. I'm only going to talk about two of them today. Uh, the first one is a product called self-serve advertising. And uh, that's just a screenshot. But the challenge was this. In Le Bon Quoi, for example, we have this long tail of small advertisers. And that's where most of the revenue is. So we wanted to go after that revenue, given that we have 25 million users a month. Um, but these small advertisers, they don't like to send a fax or make a call. They, they just want to quickly book a campaign, and it needs to be really simple. So what we've built is a really simple five-step way to just go to a, our site and quickly book a campaign uh, using your credit card, usually very hyper-local because you're a small shop, you just want to put a radius around your shop, and then you only want to pay for people that come within that radius and hopefully go visit your website, for example. So, but we had some technical challenges. Um, the biggest being um, the AppNexus console was not built for having a thousand advertisers all booking a campaign at the same time. Uh, but self-serve potentially will need a thousand advertisers all booking a campaign at exactly the same time. So, um, but then we realized it's not just self-serve, it's really all booking systems within, within our stack, because we have many, um, and so it's really the, the API to AppNexus that needs to handle the load and the scale. So, um, latency on the AppNexus API can be as much as three seconds. It's not uncommon. Uh, but what happens when we have a 1,000 simultaneous requests or 100, 100 simultaneous requests? So what we did was very simple. We decided to start queuing. Everything that we've built is in Scala. 
and everything is microservices, and we're on the AWS stack, so it was very simple for us to use Amazon Kinesis. And the trick there is, once you have um, Kinesis queuing up the requests, you can just shout out as many fans as you want. Um, so it's really just a, a cool trick, but that cool trick meant that we can handle, at the moment, 200 requests per second in a less than 45 millisecond response time with the 40 shards that we have. And of course, we can just increase the number of shards. Um, just a little bit more on, on how we did this. We are also persisting to a database first so that we know what the internal, internal state of our system is. And then we have a producer pushing to the Kinesis queue and a consumer pulling from the Kinesis queue and then sending requests to, to our Nexus. So that's how we solved um, the scalability issue within self-serve. Uh, the next product that we've built um, is called the Audience Targeting Engine. And what happened was when, we, when, we joined, um, when I joined, we had multiple um, data management systems. We had Emporio, Audience Science, Crooks, Weborama, and the list goes on. And of course, you're doing cookie syncing with them, and it's all segregated, so the data is not in one place. So we decided our data is our core intellectual property. We're going to build something that makes us own the data and get our insights out of that data. So the idea is, imagine what you're looking for as an advertiser is you're looking for a male between 20 and 25 who lives in Barcelona and is interested in fast cars. And the list of things you might be interested in goes on. So you want to be able to build a Boolean expression and very quickly create a segment of people that qualify this Boolean expression. Some of these things might be slow, such as if we're not sure if you're male or female, we'll do machine learning to figure it out. If we're not sure how old you are, we'll do machine learning to figure that out. But that's relatively slow. But knowing where you are based on either your IP address or your GPS location, which we're getting from your phone because you're wanting to sell your sofa on Le Bon Quoi, you're telling people where, where you are all the time. That's pretty quick. So we want people to move in and out of segments very quickly. And that's why we decided to implement uh, or to integrate with AppNexus real-time data provider. I'm kind of glad Brian spoke about it because it follows on, on that. Um, and then, of course, to our shock, we discovered we've got 10 milliseconds to do this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's, that's not easy. Um, so that was the one challenge. Uh, and uh, the other challenge was we're consuming a lot of events in the background. Uh, and how can we scale so we can consume all of those ev events? So some stats. So in the beginning, we were processing about 50 million page views per day from IP geotargeting only, which was our minimum viable product. Today, we're doing 500 million page views a day, and it includes everything from IP to GPS to age to gender to browsing history and search keywords and things like that coming soon. Also, move, people are moving in and out of segments in less than five seconds, 95% of the time. So you can see the graph there shows the peak number of requests that we handle uh, per day. So what did we do? In short, we went for a very component-driven distributed architecture. Um, and the idea is everything is standalone and you can add on whatever you want. We wrote it again in Scala. The front end is in JavaScript and React. But what it boils down to is um, you are, we have our own IP to Geo service, and I'm going to talk more about that. Um, and then we're collecting data from the browsers and the apps, which goes into a profile event sourcing service. And then we can figure out which segment a user belongs to and then map that to our Nexus IDs. But at the same time, we've got a standalone 
population estimation service. Um, we use data sketches for that, if anyone is interested, um, which quickly tells us the size of a segment. And of course, all of the machine learning is then just augmented to the profile uh, so that it's not disruptive. That way, machine learning takes long, but it doesn't matter. If someone is moving into a geographical segment, we still move them within less than five seconds. So that's how we overcame that scalability challenge. Next, how do we respond to the real-time data provider in less than 10 seconds? We tried everything. Um, first, we tried to do it in Scala and Java, and of course, the moment you do garbage collection, forget about it. So we had to go and we had to go to two data centers, Amsterdam and uh, Frankfurt, so that we have fall over. Um, we had to get physical hardware and put it right next to the AppNexus real-time data provider. We then um, had to go and write it in C. Um, we had to use Haywire, which is a library that's uh, also written in C, um, it's like a HTTP server that uses libuv, which is Node.js was built on. It's getting a bit geeky now. Um, and uh, we also made sure that this thing can scale horizontally. So you can reshard by, you know, resharding Kinesis. Um, you can add Cassandra and Aerospike nodes. So we decided to use Aerospike because it's in memory, written in C, no, no SQL and written for high speed. Um, and then we do the segment calculation first, and then we cache for real-time scoring. So that's how we got by. We had to do more tricks to get it down. So we had to do, for example, CPU isolation. We had to do request and transfer packet steering, so we don't get um, the impact of network interrupts. And uh, we had to stick to the same socket. But in the end, we got it down to 25,000 requests per second and responding in less than four milliseconds, which I think is incredible. Um, so the other thing we, we did was we discovered we don't really have that high precision uh, using just a third party for getting from an IP range to a geographical location. And then we thought, but we're getting all of those GPS locations, can't we build our own? So what we did was we basically said, for a given IP address, if we see a GPS location with it, and it, it forms a cluster within a three kilometer radius, we'll say the centroid, whoops, we'll say that the centroid of that cluster is the longitude latitude for that IP address. And if it doesn't form a cluster, well then we will fall back on the same third party that AppNexus uses. So, what did that give us? Well, in Norway, there's two levels of administration. It's called Filke and Kommune. I can't really say it's the same as state and county here because it's much smaller. But um, we had a 71% accuracy for the highest level of admin and 72 before our own solution. After we've started using our own solution, the accuracy, and by accuracy I mean precision as in not having false positives, uh, went up to 99 and then 97%. And slowly but surely as we collected more data, uh, the number of times we could use our own solution increased. So we're using our own solution 39% of the time. I expect it to increase and then plateau off at some point. Um, I just want to summarize before we get into questions because I, I think there's sort of four main things that I would like you to remember. Number one, um, Shipstead might be old, but we are actually at the forefront of innovation uh, right now. Other publishers are looking to us to help them. Uh, number two, uh, you don't have to just wait for AppNexus. You can actually go and build stuff on top of AppNexus and work together and do some cool stuff together. And we want to do a lot more cool stuff together with you. Um, number three, uh, if you want to scale, there are easy tricks like Kinesis and sharding. And if you want to integrate with the uh, AppNexus uh, real-time data provider, well, I've just given you the recipe. C, Haywire, Aerospike, and a couple more tweaks. 
And then uh, lastly, don't forget about the power of your own data. Because once we noticed we've got lots of GPS, quickly we were able to build a solution that was even better than a third party that has a really great solution in the first place. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.